there's a question from Ralph. Um, do you have any stories on Miss Wilson, who would later marry Sam Hill, who founded the first school in the UP and may have been involved in supporting founding the small college, <laughs> our small college called the Michigan College of Mining? Sam and his wife are buried in Marshall, Michigan. I've, I've, I've run across her. Miss Susan Warren. And, 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 and where, where I ran across her, I, I, I haven't um, done anything full blown uh, about her story, but I did this one about Hiawatha, the, that's the um, Jane and two Henrys. And it's about a fabulous woman named Jane Johnson Schoolcraft. She was a half um, Ashinaabe. I'm not sure about that. Might have been she was half Mohawk. Anyway, um, her and her father was a European from uh, Ireland. And so uh, he was familiar with things like prep schools and stuff. So he, they, they the schoolcrafts lived in Sault Ste. Marie. And so they got to know um, the, the Wilsons. I, I, I recall their name. And, and I apologize, it was the Warrens. I said that wrong. Warrens? Miss Susan Warren, who then would marry Sam Hill. Okay, that's, I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know about that then. I'm okay. going down the wrong trail. No, that's okay. Um, I, I think I it's my fault because I read it out wrong. All right. Do, why don't you pick out a next question, Erica? Your sound went off. I, I, I am muted. I was puzzling <laughs> around here. Um, there's a question that just came in from Randy. Tech founding was, whoops, and there's another question that came in. It just bounced up. It was for mining. How many mining engineers worked in the Keweenaw copper boom? Just thinking about, yeah, I mean, everything being founded here on this mining and just an idea of, whether people stayed here or were trained and continued on or? Well, one thing that um, that happened is, you know, the Keweenaw copper rush started about 1840. And, um, but in 1849, there was a gold rush. And so, one of the things that happened, which is talked about by various people, is that the copper rush people, the people that came in the 1840s period, found a bunch of fisher mines, including the cliff mine and the Minnesota mine, and they got those things going. But um, once the gold rush came, uh, a lot of the skilled and greediest people left immediately and went to California and um, tried to find gold in California because gold is more valuable than copper. And of course, gold also spread um, an incredibly strong um, feeling for people. They wanted to get rich and gold is associated, of course, completely with rich. So it took a while for people to come back and it took and really after 1868, that's the date that, this, that Billy Royal and um, all those folks were, were active. I, I'd like to find uh, descendants of Billy Royal. I wonder if there are any. Anyway, that's something for, and, and Sam Hill and, um, uh, you know, I think it's fascinating what happens. Uh, um, Hulbert was, I think, a nephew of Henry Schoolcraft. So in those days, there weren't that many um, educated people. And so, you know, when Ed Hulbert and Sam Hill went around, they always had a flock of 
people to help them. Mm-hmm. And so uh, those are the guys in the in the tavern, and uh, so that was part of the of the deal. You know, when when Douglas Houghton. That's another thing I want to do a good story on is the last days of Douglas Houghton because he drowned in a in a rowboat, but there were other people with him. And, uh, you know, those were the guys who did a lot of the work. And um, that's the way you worked in those days. You went with a crew. And, um, but you don't do things so much that way anymore. So it's an unfamiliar kind of thing. You, you read the accounts of these expeditions and they don't even mention these people a lot of the time, you know, but they were there. And so um, lots and lots of differences. And that's one of the valuable things I think I get out of looking into these stories. I forgot the question now. <laughs> well, well, so um, I would like to read out what Dave um, points out. Has Bill thought about writing a book on these stories or at least a blog? That would be great. So I know that you have the geo stories published in a certain way. Would you, would you guys explain how the public can access the stories? Sure. Uh, I think there's a. Maybe uh, Sue, Sue put the link back up. Yeah. Okay. It's in the so, chat. In the chat. So, um, 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 so it, it, what, what we did is we made the stories kind of a little bit like what I was uh, saying tonight, but we did them with illustrations that come from historic sources. And it turns out that even though um, cameras were um, not always present, it turns out we can often get pictures of these all these people that we're talking about and we can get things associated with them uh, at the same time and in the same place and these are really interesting images and so I tried to collect those and so they can be it it, it is like a blog but it's kind of an illustrated blog that's on these link sources and it's in a it's it's kind of like a YouTube video. Uh, I could have put these on YouTube, but uh, the Vimeo is another um, a source of those things, and it doesn't have as much advertising. And I, I really don't like advertising, so that's All a right. hang. I, I'm going to illustrate your link. Um, so I'm going to share a screen, and hopefully this will work. So sharing. Um, can you see, what can you see? I see. Last slides saying thank you. All right. Thank you everybody for joining us. And what I want to show you is the link from the chat. Um, so if you go into your chat, there is a link that you can click, uh, which I now I can't like every time I try to share in the middle of this. Anyway, oh there it is. Let me do it right there. So now I'm clicking on the on the link from the chat. So now you should see the blog. Yes, mm-hmm. we have the blog. All right. So this is the blog we wrote about Bill Rose for tonight's um, feature, and so you can read um, about Bill and Erica Vi, and you can see some of the. Uh, and if you scroll down to the end. Uh, um, you're going to see that there are a series of links at the bottom of the blog right here. Uh, and these are all active links. So if you click on it, you're going to go there. So if I click on Ben Franklin and Superior Negotiations, what you're going to find is a, is a, 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 um, a the story has been told here. And so you can, um, and it's a video, so you can, you'll be able to listen to it and watch some, some images. So there's Lots of fun things for you guys to do over the over the holiday break with um, all those different links. And so the links that are made up um, are published and uh, in that way, in a modern kind of way. And I think it's great because I think that's how many people these days want to 
hear things um, with with the you know it's a so basically you're telling the stories by telling a story which is great which is what you've been talking about this evening i also just put in the chat for for folks that are interested in learning um a little bit more about kiwana geology and and those links to our relationships uh, we also have a book called how the rock connects us uh, a kiwana heritage a kiwana geoheritage guide to uh, the kiwana nile royal so it's Another another outlet for folks that would like to know a little bit more about geology and get connected to those things. So. Well, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, there's there's quite a few comments, and Bill, I'll make sure you get a copy of these um, Q and A's because you you might want to follow up with people or they might want to follow up with you. Bill's email address is still active, so if anybody wants to email Bill, he answers his email usually the same day. Uh, and just look him up, William Rose, uh, Michigan Technological University, and you can send him a communication. Erica, thank you so much. Bill, thank you so much. Um, from me, I'm I'm saying thank you. Erica, you can give some closing remarks, and then Bill, you're going to give us um, words of wisdom for the evening. So Erica, wow. you're next. <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much. It's wonderful to see interest in, in this type of work that we've been doing for the past few years. And as Bill said, we love to share. We're grateful for those opportunities. And if anyone's interested in learning more about the type of work that we're doing or would like to get involved in any way, uh, you can connect us by email, pretty simply. So have a great break. Everyone deserves a break right now and, uh, and a good rest, time with family. All right, Bill. So I wanted to say that uh, I really like Husky Bites. I don't always attend, but what I like about them is that they show you what the real university is like. There are so many pockets and edges and activities that aren't out front and part of the normal perception of people. I mean, we do a lot of things. We have an outstanding communication across uh, departmental boundaries. And I've had the joy of that the whole time. I have colleagues that are really good friends that I've worked together with all across the university. And those efforts aren't part of our day-to-day -day missions, but there's something that is inevitable when you put together a bunch of creative people and you give them enough freedom to pursue these kinds of things. Of course, retirement is freedom for me, but but uh, but there's time for it even when you're working and there's a lot of enthusiasm for it. And you can just see the faculty that are getting out of their box and doing something different. And I can name you dozens of examples. And they usually do it with somebody else in the university or in the nearby environment and sometimes with lots of people. And it's so interesting. So I really like highlighting these activities. And so GeoHeritage, we're gonna to try to make it something more of a part of the university because we think it's important for geologists in particular, geoscientists to make the public realize what the relevance is of this work. It's not just the obvious things, finding water, finding rocks, you know, that kind of stuff. It's much, much more. It's understanding where we come from and how our lives are governed, particularly in places like the Keweenaw, by the earth and the Earth's processes. And uh, where would we be without them? And, we, and so we should all know about these kinds of things because the world needs geology. The world needs geoscience. And in spite of the fact that sometimes the jobs go away, and there's all sorts of struggle that people have but uh, our alumni have done spectacularly well, I think. And they've shown uh, resilience of, uh, of 
very funny discipline. It's never taught very much in a regular school. So most people don't know what it is, really. Uh, but it's a fun thing. And there's lots of creativity involved in it. And it should have social aspects. And that's what GeoHeritage does, is it, it brings us into the realm of what I sometimes call social geology. Thank goodness we have a strong social science department here. What an asset that is for us in geology. Anyway, thank you all. It was fun talking to you. All right, and we'll see everybody next year. Stay safe, stay warm, and stay sane. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.